Okay, welcome ladies and gentlemen to the first in the Transforming Assessment webinar series for 2014. Um, today's session is quite interesting one. Um, it's Badges for Learning, a review of the formative role of badges in two open online courses. The speaker today is Simon Cross. He's from the Open University in the UK, a wonderful institution that does a lot of online learning. So hopefully today's session will be very informative. Um, Simon, take it away, my friend. Uh, thank you, um, and um, welcome to everyone who um, is joining us from um, across the world. Um, it's great to see um, uh, some people a little close to home um, as well joining us. Um, uh, thank you, Matthew, for, um, for inviting me today to, to talk about some of the work um, that I've been involved with um, at the Open University. Um, it's, uh, it's an area which um, I've uh, become involved with in the last 18 months or so and very interested in. Um, uh, partly because um, of, of some involvement that I've had with open online courses um, and evaluating MOOCs um, and that question about where assessment fits um, and, um, and what happens, I guess, essentially when one removes that, uh, that element of formative uh, summative assessment rather um, at the, the end of a course. Um, I mean, we often get told that, um, about the importance of assessment in terms of driving learning, um, but when one uh, removes a, a key element of that, I think there's an interesting question um, about what, what then actually does uh, drive uh, the student's learning um, during the course. So, what I'm going to, to do this morning um, is, uh, is talk a little bit about, in, in general, about um, the, the function and the role of badges before uh, delving a little deeper into some of the work uh, and evaluation feedback we've had uh, from students um, of two um, uh, MOOCs. Um, and um, just to, to, to give a bit of background there, um, I've provided, um, there's, a, there's a link to to my home page in case you're interested in, in seeing some of the stuff that I've been involved with. Um, uh, in summary, I, I work on a number of, um, uh, of projects at the Open University um, ranging from assessment, uh, learning design, uh, e-books and students use of technology. Um, so, uh, uh, and obviously I've worked with, with many of those people in, um, in IET um, over the years on those projects. Um, there's also a link there to um, the Institute of Educational Technology at the OU's main page, uh, which gives you a flavour of some of the, uh, the work on the research and educational technology that um, is undertaken there. Um, and the Institute also provides um, a service to the university um, as well. So, um, I wanted to sort of start just by very briefly giving a heads up as to uh, where we were um, where we're heading. Um, the two courses that I'm going to talk about a little later in the presentation are the Open Learning Design Studio MOOC uh, that took place uh, last year. Um, it was uh, a nine-week uh, MOOC um, aimed at uh, learning designers um, and offered nine badges um, which were facilitator um, or peer approved depending on the badge. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, and the subject actually was learning design and OER, so it was a subject that's um, actually suited um, a MOOC format quite appropriately. It was for um, professionals, um, and um, I, I suspect some, some people listening today may, may have uh, come across it or even been involved in that. Um, and the second um, is the Open Education MOOC uh, that was run as part of one of the uh, IET's um, MA in Online Distance Education modules, uh, which again was presented last spring. Um, what we did there was the, the second unit of the four unit uh, module was opened to external learners. Um, so you had uh, a group of fee paying learners um, participating in the MOOC um, and also people joining from outside. Um, and what I will do is um, post a couple of links. Uh, the first one there in the chat box to uh, to the old MOOC, uh, the course content of which is is uh, still open. Um, the H817 uh, content uh, I think is now shut, but um, it was hosted on the Open Learn platform uh, at the Open University. So that link will take you to that just to give you a flavour of what that platform looks like. Okay, so skipping back. Um, I wanted to start this by sort of trying to sort of sketch out some of the context um, for well, from what I see um, is the conversation of badges has been situated within. Um, 
there's quite a lot of talk, I think, about badges, uh, digital badges, um, uh, that is, and in particular, open badges. Um, so badges that um, can be awarded to a learner um, and that can be taken um, by the learner um, and, um, and owned by them, essentially, um, uh, beyond the course itself. Um, and they've been flagged up as having um, a high potential impact. Um, there's a, a report that was produced um, in IET last year um, called uh, Innovating Pedagogy. Um, I'll throw a link into the chat box. Um, uh, that reviews a number of uh, emerging educational technologies and badges was identified um, in that as having um, high potential impact. Um, elsewhere, um, uh, people such as Foster have also um, uh, discussed this. Um, there's also um, a huge um, amount of uh, discussion around um, gamification um, for achievement and awards, and, and badges certainly sit within that. Um, I'll come on to a couple of definitions of badges shortly, um, but in sort of the gamified world, one also has uh, a number of other um, types, I guess, of achievement and, and, and award. Um, one has a sort of currency or capital, um, so sort of introducing sort of um, systems of, of exchange, if you like, um, and that could be currency, um, sort of economic money, if you like, uh, social um, uh, rewards, uh, and also cultural capital. Um, then there's um, the, uh, the granting of privileged informational access. Um, the, the offering of new material opportunities um, as a reward for, for participation or achievement. Um, providing collectibles, so uh, digital um, artifacts um, which uh, may be of value um, or may, may simply have um, a fun or quirky value. Um, and um, the um, award um, and gaining of trophies, um, which again is not too dissimilar from badges. Um, so we might be familiar um, with these sorts of ideas from uh, from video and computer games. Um, the screenshot there is of Red Dead Redemption, which is um, uh, by Rockstar Games, who are more um, uh, famously known for Grand Theft Auto. Um, and uh, here the player can engage in, um, in a number of um, uh, storyline activities and, and, and non-storyline activities and, and, and gain uh, rewards and achievements from those. So in the top right, there's a, a series of uh, badges, if you like, or um, achievements um, that they can gain for, for being um, uh, a, a, an able gunslinger. Um, on the bottom right, there's, a, there's an example there of how sort of one can um, accumulate uh, skill levels um, and visual symbols um, to represent that. Um, and the sheriff badge there, I think, also um, highlights the fact that um, when we're thinking about badges, I know many people will think of it as, as a badge of office um, or a, a status. Um, so um, that, that, again, sort of is another take on, on, on the badge. Um, badges and, and certainly um, achievement um, uh, and rewards have been built into um, a number of online learning uh, uh, applications. Uh, Duolingo is, is, is one example of that. Um, and I've just um, taken the, uh, these three quotes from uh, their introduction, their explanation about how it works. Uh, Duolingo is, um, is, a, is an app for helping you to learn other languages and presents you with a number of very short uh, listening, reading, uh, writing and speaking tests. Um, and uh, by being successful in those, you can advance um, and unlock uh, new areas. Um, you can uh, attempt to uh, get full marks by not losing your hearts. And also, we, we see here this, this idea about using um, achievements, uh, the potential use of badges to track one's progress um, uh, during the learning experience. Um, Another example is uh, the OU's um, uh, iSpot, or I think more broadly any form uh, of uh, crowd uh, or community site um, where uh, participation is, is acknowledged and rewarded by, by symbols, um, by, by the award of um, a type of badge. Um, here we can see that uh, Ewan Cole has um, got a, a gold medal and, and two little green uh, mushrooms. Uh, the mushrooms indicate the uh, the level of skill from one to five of um, their ability to to recognise um, and engage with the community. The the purpose of iSpot um, is to 
uh, is to allow users to post photographs of um, uh, wildlife, uh, fauna and fauna, and to allow other um, people in the community to offer identifications um, of that. So here we see that uh, Ewan has achieved two out of those five. Um, the gold uh, medal, um, whilst not particularly obvious, um, which, which, which is a, a uh, the, the, the ability to communicate effectively using graphical symbols is, is an important aspect of badges, but that uh, that gold um, you know, gold coin um, actually represents um, uh, the fact that, um, that he's a member of, I think, the Scottish uh, Natural History Society. Um, so, um, and moving on to, I think, something which many people will be familiar with, um, and that. Um, uh, the the managing of the personal display of achievement uh, and the means to award badges. Um, uh, Mozilla has done an awful lot of work and has led the way in this area. Um, and there's a link there on the slide to um, to the uh, the backpack login. Um, there's also uh, a number of um, plugins uh, which um, are, are now being offered. Um, for uh, individual users to create their own badges. Um, I've put two, two links up there. Um, I haven't had um, personal experience of setting either of those up. Um, as I'll say a little bit later, I'll explain how we set up our badges uh, using um, uh, Cloudworks. So that, that broadly gives um, a sense, hopefully, of, of the contents of badges. And, and also, I think it's important to, to highlight uh, the discussion sort of, sort of taking place um, the new questions um, uh, around potential new paradigms, um, thinking about how badges might fit into a new era of assessment, um, uh, especially on open online courses. Um, the promotion of badges, um, such as the lifelong learning competition that was run by Mozilla um, a couple of years ago, um, and and also the fact that, that now we are beginning to see some emerging studies from the higher education and high school sector um, into uh, research and, and use of badges, um, even in the uh, even in the UK. Um, uh, a number of uh, higher education institutions now are looking to badges, at least initially, possibly um, around sort of the uh, uh, the recognition of, of skills learnt on courses, um, and also at the Open University, we're looking at how badges can be um, integrated into the Open Learn uh, platform. Okay, so. Um, here are two definitions um, of, uh, of an open digital badge. Uh, the first is uh, from Mozilla. Um, the, uh, a badge is a digital credential that represents skills, interests, and achievements earned by an individual through specific projects, programs, courses, um, and other activities. Um, the second definition is, is, is a working definition that, um, that I generally um, find quite useful, which is a badge is a visual public symbol. Um, I think the public bit there is quite important. Uh, that communicates to others a particular quality, achievement, or affiliation possessed by the owner. Um, and as we've noted, it's one of a variety of ways that such recognition can take a material form. Um, and in the case of digital badges, that material form um, is obviously online. Um, for the purposes, um, uh, I think here about talking about what a, what a badge is, um, uh, Mozilla um, have um, a, a format that uh, um, essentially um, uh, people can um, conform to, which is that a badge is uh, about 90, well, it's exactly 90 pixels square. And what the badge does is it provides a link um, through to um, uh, to evidence um, of um, the uh, the achievement or. or uh, what the learner has done to actually gain that badge. So what 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 is created when a digital badge is formed and, and awarded is is a direct link between that initial that visual representation um, and the work that the learner has undergone. The idea being that anyone at any time can click through on that badge and verify for themselves uh, the, whether the learner has done that work and and the quality of that work. Um, essentially, providing um, a check um, for. Uh, uh, for, for that, the attainment. So, um, in summary, um, there are a number of potentials for badges. Um, accreditation and evidence of learning, um, which I think is probably closest to the traditional idea of summative assessment. Uh, the strengthening of student motivation, um, and I'll look at look at that in a couple of slides' time. Uh, promoting deeper learning experiences. Uh, reaching informal and non-traditional learners, the idea that um, uh, 
the, the badges may be attractive um, and may help um, those learners uh, not either traditionally learning at the moment or for whom um, the, the award of uh, summative assessment or the interest in gaining accreditation might not be as much interest. Um, helping students better value achievements, um, in particular valuing achievements um, uh, during a course um, as well as obviously um, gaining the, the mark at the end. Um, and recognising competency-based learning. Um, and this, of course, um, is something which I know that Mozilla are very interested in. Um, and, and that recognition may be in terms of a recognition of prior learning um, and uh, prior competency and skills, um, as well as those gained when a, a learner is studying a course. Um, I can I can see there's lots of stuff going on in the chat, um, and um, so so apologies for not uh, not not engaging with all of that because it's going quite quickly. Um, uh, so um, I'll just take um, a, a breather here for a second, um, just to see if there's any questions uh, in particular that people would like to ask before. I move on just to, to looking at some of the specific functions of badges. So if you do have any specific questions, if you can maybe just um, post them in the chat room. OK. Um, so we've got what, uh, what impact would badges have on competition? Um, definition um, of a micro badge. Um, uh, that's very interesting. Um, no, I don't. Um, uh, I think the uh, the definitions of badges are still actually being worked through. Um, and, uh, and I think in the next couple of slides, um, what I will try to do is, is suggest that um, there are some other definitions of badges that we maybe um, aren't necessarily thinking about as much. Okay, so um, I'll move on. Um, these four functions of badges are posed by Daniel Heakley in um, a blog post, uh, I think last year or the year before. Um, I'll put up um, a link to it um, in the chat box. Um, again, so uh, the function of badges uh, for him really um, rests around a recognition of learning, um, whether that's highlighting the time or effort that a learner has actually put into the badge, um, or as we've already said about the, the just providing simple evidence um, that the, uh, the badge um, uh, has been gained. Um, assessment of learning. Um, I think also probably one could also say there the, the driving of the, uh, the development um, of assessment strategy. Um, so not only um, is it uh, could badges actually drive uh, the assessment, but also putting in place proper um, assessment structures um, and, and the design of those assessments. Um, in motivating learning, um, and again here I think uh, there is both in extrinsic and intrinsic motivations uh, for learning. Um, and the evaluation and tracking of progress. Um, I'll come back to that um, in respect to our particular studies later. But I think the, the idea about using badges um, uh, as indicators for uh, how well students are doing and what they're doing, I think, is a very interesting one. Um, of course, in terms of motivation, um, one can actually possibly go too far. Um, and there are certainly people who do warn about um, a sort of an over-justification, if you like. So um, the, the, the negative impacts of, of badging on, on degrading um, uh, sort, of, uh, sort of other forms of formative assessment, um, a shift to game mechanics. Um, so students are playing the system, um, which we will see in assessment already, um, and an increase in, in the expectation of extrinsic reward. Um, so we'll come on to some of those, um, those, those issues later on as well. Um, alongside those, I think we can probably add um, a number of, of functions that badges have in, in the social um, realm, in, in uh, uh, sort of the social operation of, of groups. Um, these, uh, I don't think I have the link, um, link with me. Um, but, but here we can see that uh, badges can, can function in terms of collective uh, goal setting, um, collectively sanctioned or agreed uh, goals. Uh, badges can um, create uh, symbols of status within a group um, or a community. Uh, that uh, they can serve um, to help 
new uh, newcomers um, learn the, the norms of that group or the community um, and essentially point out um, aspects of value behavior. Um, uh, build a reputation um, both within the group and individuals within that group and also uh, to, to help communicate to individuals um, the important aspects of, of group identity, so levels of trustworthiness um, or particular forms of practice. Um, and, then, and then moving on again, um, and here a couple of picking up a couple of, um, uh, of functions which I, I think have been discussed in quite a different context by Carr, who um, actually um, was looking at the, the sort of coins, crests, and kings in, in the occupied uh, Channel Islands during the Second World War. But um, I think this is indicative of, of some sort of the, the work on um, social and cultural studies, which, um, in which we can see that a badge um, uh, uh, can act as a, as a tool for resistance or for domination. Um, so there's some interesting questions there around how badges operate uh, um, as, as symbols of power. Um, questions around the badge um, as use of a symbol of exclusivity, so as, as a member of a club or uh, um, to demarcate uh, people within a group and those um, excluded from the group. Um, and finally, the badge um, as a souvenir, which I think is a really interesting concept. Um, I think it links through to this idea um, about rewards um, as trophies or collectibles. Uh, but this, I think this idea that, um, that students might um, seek to, to collect badges um, and, and have badges just, just as, um, uh, as a souvenir of participation um, or engagement um, in a course. Um, one can also possibly um, push this even further. Um, I think understanding a badge as, uh, um, as um, uh, essentially as, um, as something which is produced and, and gains a certain cultural capital. So uh, creating badges as being something which is an act of cultural production, um, I think is really interesting. Um, and uh, and I think these, these latter few points actually point partly to to this, this this fact that actually we still don't quite fully understand how how badges actually might be used um, both by learners um, and by the the, uh, the institutions who issue them. Um, and I think that in, uh, question about the role of the issuer um, is something which I find quite fascinating. Um, there's lots of discussion um, around what badges will do for learners, um, but taking the flip side of that, um, we, can, we can maybe suggest that um, there, there are a number of, um, of functions um, and and perceived values of the badge for the issuing um, institution or the issuing individual. Um, this can be everything from uh, it providing a solution to the motivation issue. So we remove the summative assessment at the end of the course. We need to introduce something else. We can put badges in there and they'll fill the gap um, as, a, as a, uh, a method of actually generating evidence of student learning. Um, so if one creates a badge where one expects the learner to upload a short essay or, um, or a piece of work, whatever, one is instantly um, um, asking the learner to, to evidence in a public way the work that they're doing. Um, that uh, the badge can be used to, um, to help the constructive alignment um, of, uh, of learning activities with learning outcomes. It can be perceived as, I think, a low cost um, or a low effort option. Um, something which will uh, essentially deliver some form of benefit in terms of, of assessment um, but will be relatively cheap in the process. Um, it can help save time in assessing by, um, by rewarding prior learning. Um, it can of course uh, bolster the issuer's image or their profile. Um, the badge also um, can have at least the potential to, to tie the issuer and the owner closer together. Um, so the the uh, the owner actually the, so the student becomes more closely tied uh, to the uh, to water and therefore also potentially more complicit in the process um, of of valuing and and displaying that badge um, and promoting it um, and it can also be a way of course of of an issue retaining um, authority and status um, uh, especially in, in in courses where uh, there's more of a democratization of participation. Um, okay, so um, it's great to see uh, lots of conversation happening in the chat box as well. 
Um, so um, certainly, I think there's sort of there's there's two types of activity in terms, of, well, at least two types of activity in terms of badges that we can we can maybe think about. Um, the first one is is the difference between badge attainment and badge display. So the activity that the learner will do in terms of learning to attain that badge, so to to meet the criteria that the issuer has set um, for for gaining that badge, and then also the activity and the work that a student uh, needs to do to uh, display that badge um, and to continue to display that. So whether they put it into their um, Mozilla uh, backpack, whether they decide to put it on, on their home page or whatever, they have to actively do that and they have to often um, actively maintain that over a period of time. So the the former, in a sense, is is happening while they're doing the learning. The badge is, is having some sort of formative role. And the second one is, is perhaps not dissimilar to, to how people would use um, uh, um, a qualification, something like that, in more of a summative way. They, 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 they seek to actually uh, use that to represent um, their, their skills, their understandings to, to a broader, a broader uh, community. Um, and I think uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure whether one can completely map this, uh, but in, in some senses, um, uh, the attainment of the badge um, uh, and the formative aspects um, uh, uh, and the functions of a badge can be perhaps linked more to the intrinsic motivations um, that uh, the students might have. Um, the, the display of the badge, uh, or at least the motivation to have a badge to display, um, can perhaps more broadly be, be mapped to extrinsic motivations, although I think there's probably quite a lot of um, uh, cross fertilization as well. Um, uh, so, so those are those are sort of some ways I think um, hopefully that um, that we can begin to sort of think about the the role um, and the function of of a digital badge when we're using it within our courses um, and, and within our learning. There's these these sort of these formative uh, roles, these summative roles. Uh, the badge is being used for um, to drive intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation, um, and and the different. Uh, the different ways that a badge might function for specific uh, groups of of learners uh, within that course. Um, okay, um, and I see there's a couple of um, couple of comments in the chat uh, boxes around um, the verification of badges um, and uh, validity. Uh, Validification of of badges, um, which again is, is is something which um I'll, I'll mention because that was something which came up uh, with some of the, the student sponsors um, in our studies. Um, okay, so um, we return now to the the two courses um, that that I mentioned earlier. Um, the first one uh, was uh, just to remind, uh, remind ourselves the Open Learning Design Studio MOOC. Um, that uh, this was a, a nine-week MOOC uh, that was funded by JISC, uh, um, funded by the UK, um, and was uh, developed by um, a number of universities. Um, the way it actually worked is that um, a number of uh, contributors uh, prepared a one-week um, of of the of the nine week course, and these were sort of daisy chained together, um, uh, with with the idea that um, participants would be um, asked a number of of activities which they would they would do in sequence if they were designing a course, um, and that uh, so therefore the course begun with sort of the ideation stage at the beginning, um, and ended with um, how one might evaluate uh, the, the the design of your course and uh, wants to be delivered at the end. Um, and a number of badges were, were offered, um, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and the second one, which was the Open Education MOOC, uh, which was delivered um, uh, as an open um, unit to one of the MA um, courses here at the Open University. Um, that lasted sl uh, slightly less time. The subject was on MOOCs and OER, and the intention was to give uh, fee-paying students the experience of participating in a, in a, in a larger MOOC, and, and that MOOC was obviously also opened up to um, external non-fee-paying students. So in terms of the badges, um, the, uh, the, this slide here shows uh, the badges that we, uh, that we offered. Um, we had uh, nine badges for, for the first MOOC. Um, we developed a badging strategy before the MOOC uh, begun, 
um, and these badges were aligned with uh, the learning outcome and the activities um, uh, and the attended outcomes of the course. Um, I'll put a link uh, to that badging strategy um, into the chat box. Ah, someone's already put it in there. That's super. Um, oh, it's it's on the page. I haven't noticed that. So. Um, so the um, so we've got three different types of badges here. The first uh, uh, the first three um, all mainly relate to achievement. So to, for the learner to produce something, uh, uh, the learning designer was for the production of a learning design. Uh, the OER developer was for the production of a um, uh, an art uh, an artifact uh, um, for uh, uh, of open education resources. Um, so those were sort of achievement of things. Um, the next three, the blue ones, were for effort, uh, for endeavor or progress. So this was really just um, reward of, of commitment to the course um, and for um, uh, accomplishment of the activities within those weeks. So we had a one week, a three week, and a six week. Uh, we didn't specify that that was the first week or accomplishment of the first three weeks because we wanted to keep it open. So if someone came in to the open MOOC um, in week four, they could still do one week and earn a, a one week badge. Um, and the final three um, are there. Um, sorry, did you create the graphics yourself? Yes, um, we did create the graphics um, ourselves. Um, uh, I'm not sure if there are specific tools for creating existing badges. Um, I think um, I think there are some now which uh, potentially do allow you to sort of select sort of a bit like um, clip art um, sort of things, which you can uh, that you can um, uh, compile together into that sort of 90 by 90 frame um, thing to, to create those. But the the challenge of actually how one how one actually Draws these and, and creates them. Actually, manages to get all the information to little badges. is it, it, is actually quite tricky. Um, and and I think the hotshot badge, which is on the top right there, uh, which is essentially for the achievement of all the other eight badges. Um, it's not very easy to see, uh, but there's actually a date on the bottom of it which says 2013 as well, because we thought it was important, certainly with that one, to actually um, to label the year in which the the badge was was created as um, as well. Um, but the bottom three, the, the red ones, um, are, are there to uh, reward um, uh, uh, um, preferred practice or, or, or practices um, that we would like, which would sort of obviously um, encourage community engagement. So we have one there for a review of, of other people's uh, learning designs, uh, one there for um, uh, collaboration, so uh, for doing a group work activity, um, and the third one for um, essentially for gathering links, so for sharing, I think it's for sharing three other links to learning resources uh, with the community. Um, so none of those were necessarily required to undertake the, the course, but they were there to sort of help um, encourage learners um, to, to stretch themselves beyond what was required. Um, and the, the bottom uh, three uh, were the badges that were awarded um, for the, uh, the um, MA um, course. Um, and here we have uh, one for the understanding of MOOCs, one for um, uh, the understanding of um, open educational resources. These link directly with um, parts of that unit. Um, and then a uh, third badge, which is for the completion um, of, of, that, um, of that unit of learning. Um, the, uh, the, style simu the similarity in style is, is simply because we, we use the same um, design format for both of them. Um, so those were the badges that were on offer. Um, uh, I'll skip through a couple of slides because um, I just wanted to illustrate um, that for each of these badges um, on the system, we set um, criteria for their attainment. So um, here you are for, for week, the week one badge. We have completing any one week of the MOOC, a badge to show effort to engagement. Um, and then further down with the red ones, uh, contributing three or more items to the learning design toolbox, um, a community practical badge. So the way in which we set these up, we, we've been using um, a system called Cloudworks, which, which some of you may be aware of, which was developed in a previous GIFs project for um, a learning design, which the Open University um, has been working on since 2008, 2009. Um, what, we, what we did is we added um, a little bit of extra code, which would allow us to um, uh, allow um, users to create their own digital badges 
um, and for uh, Cloudwork Cloudworks users to apply for and uh, receive those badges. Um, I'll see if I've got. Uh, I think I posted um, a link to Cloudworks earlier. I think you can um, you can Google it anyway. Um, but um, anyone uh, using Cloudworks can create a badge um, or any number of badges. Um, the screenshot here shows that you just need to come up with a name, um, a description, um, an image. Uh, which has to have a, a maximum file size, um, a maximum pixel size, um, and has to be a PNG um, image format. Um, and then um, a, a box there where you can fill in the specific criteria um, uh, that's required. You can also um, uh, set specific um, um, uh, rules as to as to who can award those badges. So it might be by a facilitator, it might be um, by anyone in the community, um, a badge might need more than one other people to approve it uh, before it's approved. Um, so well, this is just one example. I think of it, I said earlier a number of uh, of, uh, of packages now that sort of offer this ability to create badges. Um, and here's a, a screenshot of some of the badges which are currently in Cloudworks. Um, so alongside, there's a, there's a couple of ones um, from the from the old move last year. But as you can see, there's a number of other um, badges which have been added. There's a couple of there for um, H817 conference um, for participation um, and engagement. Uh, there's a CloudQuester badge for undertaking activity on CloudWorks. Um, an attendance badge there for um, an eFest event. Um, uh, so a range of different types of badges. Um, uh, there. um, there's a link there at the bottom of the page to the uh, to the badge list. Um, and what happens is once you've earned your badges um, and they've been awarded and, and, uh, and approved um, by whichever means um, has been selected, that the, um, the badges will then show up on your uh, personal page. So um, in Cloudworks, any, any badge within Cloudworks will show up here um, underneath the person's name. Uh, and uh, Obviously, you know, for some people um, this is great. Um, for, for other people, they like to have a little bit more control over that. And of course, the idea of the Mozilla backpack in the long term is to allow people to export their um, their badges and to manage their badges in in, in one place. Um, and uh, the the badges on CloudWorks um, are, are 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 capable of of doing that. If you if this were to be a live screen, um, and you were to click on any of these badges, you would go. To, to the um, uh, to the web page um, in which the evidence for for that um, accomplishment um, has been posted for for the weeks that will probably be um, uh, either links to blog posts or blog posts themselves um, to the uh, to the learning design or that might be a link to the learning design. Uh, the challenge and the difficulty comes when you you want um, a learner to do more than one thing. So if you want a learner to provide three examples of something. You can still only have one link. So what you maybe then have to do then is to ask them to put those three links on another page and then link through to that page. Um, so um, some of just things to think about. Um, moving very swiftly on to uh, to um, how we how we captured um, uh, uh, information and uh, about the learner's experiences with badges. Um, in the Open Learning Design Loop, we had 66 uh, responses to a pre-course survey, um, which asked about expectations um, for the course, and 22 from the post-course survey that included specific questions about badges. Um, we reviewed over 500 Twitter posts, which we archived during the course, um, and did a, um, a search of those for, um, for posts relating to, to experiences of badges. And we also had a number of feedback forms. Um, in relation to the Open MOOC, uh, we had 128 pre-course surveys and 65 post-course surveys. Again, those surveys included questions about people's um, um, experience, uh, value um, of, um, of the badges which were included in the course. Um, okay, so so here we go. On to on to some results. Um, neither of the MOOCs were were huge by um, by I think some of them some sort of uh, current standards we had around 200 to 300 um, active participants um, probably around a thousand to two thousand people originally sort of signing up or, or expressing interest um, what one can see here is that uh, the, the little uh, 
blue rectangles on the right hand side of the screen show the number of of active participants that we had in the first week and in the third week. Um, and I, I put those in there just to compare that with the number of badges that were awarded. Um, and it's quite interesting that the, for the first week at, at least you've got about a third of the participants actually um, uh, applying for, for a badge um, um, and an increasing number as one moves into week three. So of those people who do um, who did stick with the course as it was in, as intended, a greater portion of those actually applying for the badges. So, um, so that is quite useful perhaps in terms of thinking about how one could actually use the badges to, uh, to monitor and, and track um, engagement uh, with the course. Uh, what you'll also notice there towards the bottom of the page that we really didn't get too many people applying for uh, uh, some of the some of the, the badges, such as the collaborator um, or the reviewer badges, um, it's quite an, it's quite interesting. Partly, I think, because there were fewer people who were posting uh, full learning designs um, uh, on the course, and therefore there was far less to review. Um, but also, I think there are there's some interesting questions around the fact that uh, to review um, to review something requires not only more engagement, but probably a, a deep engagement with the learning. Um, as well, um, and um, and again, we we found that uh, for um, with, so we actually only really had two people at the very end of this. So we had what uh, 220 people um, participating, uh, 69 uh, getting the first week badge, um, but then only ending up with a few achieving the whole thing. Um, Gina says, why are you able to explore why people didn't complete the course to entertain the badges? Um, I think part of that is, is uh, uh, in general, the the the, the attrition you always get with uh, with MOOCs. Um, I think there are also some uh, uh, some issues around um, uh, what one was actually asking the uh, the learners to be doing. Um, I think um, the the idea of the course was that one put for uh, put together a portfolio um, across those nine weeks, um, which was a very intriguing idea. But of course, that also requires um, a sustained amount of uh, of work through those nine weeks, um, and for many people that was that was um, impractical, um, or people were, for whatever reason were unable to share some of the the learning designs that they were working on. For example, um, if it was a current course, or they didn't feel that their institution would allow them to sort of share some of that information. Um, so, so yes, it was. It was. Uh, um, it was. Uh, we would have preferred to to have um, uh, to have obviously seen sort of more people. But I think for a lot of people, they 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 felt that they were gaining uh, gaining learning from the course without necessarily um, feeling the need to be applying for, for for those badges, which which I think is an interesting thing. Um, so the first week badge was an encouragement badge. Yes. Um, uh, and the only one that would count would be the week six. Um, I'm just looking at Rebecca's post here. Yes, um, that's that's very true. Um, I think obviously we we weren't necessarily certain about how these would be received, um, and and I think what we wanted to do was to get um, a a badge out early um, to reward that that initial effort. Um, and to also get people familiar with the process of applying for a badge because the process of applying for a badge in its own right is quite a challenge. Uh, well, it can be quite a challenge because you've got to, you've got to learn the technology, you need to work out how you, uh, you add your link. There's, there's, a, there's a process behind that as well. Um, in respect to uh, the other MOOC, um, uh, the, uh, we had 57 um, and 47 awards for the two um, initial badges, uh, fewer for, for the third. Um, that's partly because in uh, the, the final badge was in the last week of the uh, of the MOOC, and that was also the time where the fee-paying students were having to um, to undertake real assessment, uh, well, real assessment, but assessment that would count to their final grade, and so the, the unit two assessment. Um, so that that lower number is is, is partly a reflection of the fact that um, in that week those fee-paying students were prioritising doing the, their, their their summative assessment. Um, okay, so um, as we can see, uh, this is information from that second MOOC. Um, the, uh, it's quite interesting that um, both the, the OU group, so that's the, the fee-paying students and the non-OU group, 
um, uh, we're both um, applying for, uh, for badges, um, and that also that we're finding um, that um, over half um, in both in both groups um, did actually apply for at least one badge, um, and most of them applied for two or three. Um, when asked did they find the badges uh, a positive addition to the course, um, the Peace Pain students um, overwhelmingly said yes. Um, it was a little bit more um, of a mixed response from from the fee sorry, from the fee paying students was more mixed. Uh, the the, uh, the the free students, the, the non fee paying students certainly um, found, found it very useful. Um, and what I wanted to finally do was really just to sort of uh, reflect some of the, the themes that came out of our analysis of this data. Um, we uh, we worked through um, a number of open. We had about three open text. Uh, uh, box uh, comments in the survey, uh, which yielded some really interesting, very rich feedback from from the students, um, and uh, we analysed that in Envivo to try and pull out some of the the main themes. Um, I think one of the one of the interesting things was obviously was the was the badges a, a recognition of learning. So this is this is more the around the the aspect of display. Um, the extrinsic motivation. So we found about 42% talking about the badges providing evidence or recognition of effort or achievement, having something to show. Um, one um, one member of the staff said that they felt that they, they could put it on their profile to show they'd done the learning. Um, it was good for their personal learning network and also good for their learners. Um, I thought that was quite an interesting comment. Uh, the fact that they they felt that um, this was actually showing to their students. Um, that they were engaging with professional um, uh, development practices. Um, another thing that came out um, was was the, the badge of a sense of fun, um, which I think is is, is quite um, it's quite the opposite of sort of thinking of the badge as sort of something which is um, reflecting um, an indicator of, of some of the achievements uh, that could be used to uh, as, as a, as a as a surrogate for accreditation. I mean, many people just found that the badges were were quite good fun. Um, they made me smile, which is a good thing. Uh, learning should be fun, and I think this was a fun element of the course. Um, and people, you know, there were a few people who also talked about earning a badge and being unexpectedly pleased to have a reward for their effort. Um, uh, and there were a number of other tweets um, which were. Uh, along quite sort of similar lines, um, and I'll, I'll just put a couple in the uh, uh, in the in the text chat box here, which um, which we've sort of just taken from our um, uh, from our um, archive um, of tweets that we recorded during the course. Um, so certainly, um, certainly some strong encouragement, and, and at least some of the learners finding these things being quite useful. Um, but it also um, seem to uh, create a topic of discussion um, and um, an exchange between uh, between us, which was which was great to see. Um, we also found, um, as I think was expected, that um, for, for many the badges were very useful in terms of guiding progress. Um, so so some thought, found them um, as indicators of what the of the designers of the course found. Um, uh, useful uh, to highlight particular elements uh, which would align quite well to specific learning outcomes. Um, and, and, and this quote from, from one student, um, I did not have the time or motivation to do every activity, but I wanted to set specific action goals for myself, and I like the idea of badges. They were new to me in a way to motivate myself through the completion of the course. So the badge is almost becoming something which, which shows what's the most important stuff to study. Um, Personal achievement. Um, again, um, for many, actually, the badge was was as much something which wasn't for for public consumption, but simply was something which people liked gaining themselves. Um, it's a symbol of my personal reward and effort. Even if I don't show the badges to anyone, and I haven't so far, I feel satisfied to have gained them. Um, it's my auto congratulation. Um, and I think this is quite this is quite an interesting point. This 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 question about how much control. Uh, that we give uh, students to display the badges, and, and what role, even if they never get displayed, they might have in terms of motivating uh, learners uh, and, and provi providing sort of a formative um, uh, a function during the course. Um, again, as I mentioned, uh, we also found that, that just having to do badges provide a focus for communal learning. Um, one student commented that peer validation, which was required for some of the badges, was a great idea, 
I got as much out of validating others' badge applications as getting my own badges. This was clearly one of those um, one of those dozen or so people who did apply for uh, for some of those peer validated badges. Um, and within uh, Twitter, we also found people um, inviting um, other participants to validate badges, um, which was good to see. Um, uh, we also found um, several students uh, talking about uh, the badge um, in relation to identity. Um, one of them uh, spoke about uh, the bad, uh, having the badge or, or, or working towards the badges as being um, like being in a club, um, and also the uh, the value of a badge um, in making someone proud. Uh, to having having gained it, um, and also because of the positive association that they had with the course, um, they were proud of having the badge because they also liked the course. Um, and I think there's also this question. I think this this comes probably to the to the hub of the uh, of one of the really interesting questions between formative and summative roles of badges, is is the relative bad value that a badge might have once you take it beyond the course. So um, there are, there. Are, a number of students who weren't entirely sure how much value it would be to them externally. Um, so one of them said, I debated whether or not to do this, uh, the activities to get them, and, and whether to apply or not. And I decided it might be useful over in this professional development, but I'm not sure if my institution will care or not. Um, and I think this is quite interesting because um, it, it suggests that the badge can still have an awful lot of value within a course, even if it hit it has relatively little value once it is actually taken outside that course and, and displayed externally. Um, so, uh, and then very briefly moving on to issues. Um, I'm just keeping an eye on the time, so I've um, got about two or three minutes. Um, but I know several people have, uh, have been mentioning some of these in the chat box already. Um, but when we asked um, uh, participants about uh, what some of the issues were, some of the challenges, um, People did mention about uh, the potential of a badge to present a misleading impression of knowledge. Uh, they weren't necessarily um, uh, you know, confident or sure about what the approval process was, um, if it was robust enough, um, that, that it, 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 it might um, lead to infer um, uh, um, accreditation or um, approval um, by an institution or an individual that might not necessarily be, be correct. Um, some talk spoke about the, the pressure to participate um, and about wanting to feel they have permission not to uh, to earn badges and not to apply for badges. Um, so feeling inadequate for not applying for them. I think that again, that's that's quite an interesting uh, issue um, because um, whilst it f was from a minority, um, about sort of 20, 25 percent of respondents. Um, didn't feel that they they wanted to, or were interested in badges. Whether that was because um, uh, they uh, they didn't feel it's for them, or that they they weren't certain about whether a badge would be something which um, you know um, was useful for them. Um, I think that sort of question of of feeling organised sort of badges uh, as being patronising was voiced by some people, although that was that was a, um, a small minority. Um, there were a number of people for both courses because they were quite closely associated with MOOCs and with open educational resources, um, that there was a professional interest in wanting to experience it for themselves. So one also has to be mindful of the fact that for some applying for badges were actually just to see how badges worked and if they worked. Um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, some people felt at the time technical challenge and just simply applying for the badge was just really just not worth, uh, worth it really. Um, okay, so um, for me, um, that's that's it, and um, thank you very much for uh, for listening. Um, I'm very much looking forward to looking at all the discussion in in the text chat um, because I know I haven't been able to to watch it all as I've been talking. Um, I just leave you with this one quote from from one of the learners, which was, "I still don't understand well why, but badges were a good motivator for me." And, and again, whilst it might not be for everyone, I think there's, there's a lot which we really still need to understand about how badges could work uh, within courses for particular groups of people and how best we can exploit, exploit it, certainly in, in open online courses and then maybe even perhaps reflecting that back into other university courses too. So that's me, Matthew, um, and I'll hand back over to you. And uh, thank you for your comments as well. Thanks, Simon. That's great. Um, if 
people can please stick around just for a little while and fill in my survey. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Um, there's the link now. Um, the link on the slide, this one is actually live, so if people can please click it. That would be great. Um, and if you would like to ask questions um, via the voice system, please do. That's put up your hand using a little hand symbol, and then we can hand you the microphone. So any questions whilst um, you're filling in the survey, that would be great. Uh, Simon, if you want to make your, you are able to make the window for the chat section bigger if you grab the top of it and drag it up, that way you'll be able to perhaps see more of it. Uh, okay, so um, I see um, just as a, uh, a question by Charles there about um, I'm unaware of institutions using them for the development of, of graduate outcomes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, there's uh, some work by um, uh, uh, Ian Glover, um, uh, and he did a presentation last year um, uh, in uh, at Ed Media. Um, uh, looking at uh, perceptions potential of open badges, um, I think uh, I think what he was looking at, um, and I forget which uh, it's terrible, isn't it? I, f I forget which institution it was. I, th I think it was at one of the London universities, um, but I think that that was actually um, uh, looking at uh, graduate students. Um, but um, it was uh, it was a presentation by Media in 2013. Um, uh, so, um, and that's Ian Glover and uh, Atif. Um, so that might be useful to, to look that up. Um, and so I don't have any more details to hand about that. Um, I'll just scan through and see if there's um, other questions higher up on the uh, on the chat. I think um, there's several people who, uh, a couple of posts here I see about um, talking, people talking about uh, uh, trophies or other forms, and I think, I think this question for me, the, the question about what, what really is a badge and what's a trophy, what's a collectible, or what's an achievement. Uh, um, I, I think actually trying to work out what, I, how you define each is, is quite difficult, um, and and I'm aware that sometimes when I talk about badges, um, uh, they might almost be considered um, achievements or, or trophies um, or whatever. Um, I think sometimes uh, the the role and the functions will be will be similar, um, and sometimes uh, different. Um, there's I've, there's certainly some quite interesting papers um, around the psychology of collecting um, um, and about how people um, uh, like and enjoy collecting. Um, um, either um, artifacts or objects, um, but also collecting um, things like ideas and stuff like that. And I think that's quite an interesting uh, motivation uh, to consider for some people. The fact that some people actually do quite like this idea of, of amassing and collecting and collecting things. Um, uh, question there from from Dave about seeing uh, students competing with their peers to achieve more badges uh, than each other. Um, that's something which which we um, we sort of didn't see um, particularly in this course, but um, certainly uh, people uh, uh, from some of the tweets and stuff were very proud to be um, achieving some of those uh, some of the badges and, 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 and quite keen to tell other people that they were achieving some of those badges. Um, I think maybe um, being used in in um, you know, the larger courses or certainly university courses, it would be a very interesting question about. Um, how students um, use and engage in the competition, and also the flip side of that, um, about how, as we saw, some people aren't very keen on badges precisely because they do um, tend to, or they might be perceived to promote um, competition between students. 
Um, someone's asked about, do we notice perceptions towards badges amongst different age groups? Um, that's something which uh, we haven't looked at, um, and but I think it's something that we, we could. Um, we uh, we only have, well, we have about sort of 70 or 80 surveys, um, and we do have some demographic data for some of that, so that is something which, um, that's a good suggestion. Um, it'd be interesting to have a look at more. So thank you for that. Uh, do I see uh, badges as a step in long-term approach to assessment in the next decade? Where do I see them going? Um, is it the end of summative assessment? Uh, that's from Jerry. Um, I, th I think the broader question about how one um, how one can can maintain uh, motivation and participation in in online courses when one removes that um, summative assessment. Um, certainly, in terms of open online courses, we can see that. A number of efforts are being uh, put in place to try and introduce something which looks a bit like a summative assessment um, in terms of a, a certificate or a, a final um, quiz or, or something something of that sort. Um, there's, a, there's also a very interesting move undertaken at, at the OU um, by the uh, uh, in languages, which was uh, a translation MOOC. Um, but I think that model was very interesting because. Uh, Part of the of the MOOC um, was to divvy up a, a course and ask uh, participants to translate part of the course. Um, so essentially, one created a collective endeavour um, that then meant at the end of the course, um, everyone's contributions would be put together, and that therefore, as a group, one would actually create something. Um, and I thought that was quite a quite a nice idea to sort of um, to compensate for uh, for not having the sort of the, the summative assessment as an end goal. Um, uh, so I think I think badges will be important. Um, I think the real challenge is going to be um, externally in terms of um, how one actually, if one can imagine there being thousands and thousands of badges, how one actually is able to uh, uh, create a set of badges that are are, are understood to be valued um, by people who are not familiar with that course, um, a standard university. Um, qualification is is a, is a widely understood um, uh, uh, um, award. Um, it has has a, a broadly understood process in, in which um, it, it guarantees what the student has has, has undertaken. Um, I think there's there's a there's a, a big challenge for for communication to to employers, for example, and, and to other students um, about uh, about what value badges might have. Which is why I think that thinking about some of the, the the formative roles of badges, actually in terms of making sense and, and being useful within the course, um, irrespective of whether they they have um, uh, um, a role beyond that, I think is something which is certainly worth um, worth further attention. I'm not sure if anyone else um, has any comments around that about whether they see badges as a step to a longer term approach for assessment and where they see things going. Um, be great to hear your views. Uh, Simon, there was an interesting question towards the end about whether you see badges as um, becoming the way of the future, and in fact, even potentially replacing, you know, summative assessments that we might do in universities. Uh, yeah, um, that's. Um, it's, it's very difficult. Um, I, I often sort of trying to sort of think about think about this, and sometimes I do wonder whether it's it's a little bit like comparing apples and oranges. Um, in the sense that, to some extent, they they, they serve different purposes, um, uh, at least in terms of um, uh, in terms of sort of how they might work within a course themselves. Um, but I'm also aware of the fact that there is great value in in the badge as being uh, as being something which 
uh, cumulatively um, in, uh, could be could be useful and be used as a surrogate for for accreditation, um, or at least to be helpful in terms of guiding um, and indicating student participation in particular activities um, when one comes to actually uh, uh, to, to to reward students or or to to mark essays um, or whatever else one is doing uh, within within the formal assessment structure. Um, I think there's there's still some quite interesting questions about working out how the two map onto each other if one was wanting to do that. That's great. Thank you for all your your comments as well. This is this is lovely. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, Jerry. Um, in terms of badges being a potential tool in the repertoire, um, I do think sometimes. Um, I often would see a badge as being a, a almost secondary tool, if you like. Um, I think it's 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 now just a little bit to to how um, these sorts of rewards um, are 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 used within in video games. I think um, the the main the main story arc or or the main learning arc um, for a course um, remains intact. The uh, the badges, the trophies, the collectibles, and stuff um, punctuate that and and enrich that. Um, but it is something which is working alongside and in tandem uh, with that, that that sort of that overarching um, arc of, of what's being learnt, rather than necessarily even always being sort of the primary thing. So. Okay. Uh, okay, thanks, Simon. Shall we wrap it up? Um, looks like people are now sort of leaving the place. So, thank you very much for your session. It was very interesting. I think badges certainly will become part of our landscape in the future. Um, mm -hmm. As I think, I mean, I'm guessing that it's not going to replace things. And I mean, I think like most new technologies and most new ways of things, it just augments what we already have and adds to it. Um, certainly, I mean, I know in our university we have. You know, hurdle requirements in quite a number of courses. In other words, the students have to do this thing, um, but they don't get marks for it. So it's kind of like, you know, I can see kind of like badges being, you know, a, a mechanism for recognising those you know, those hurdle achievement achievements, even though they don't have grades associated with them. So, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. No, it's been it's been a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. You're most welcome. All right, folks, um, I'm going to stop the recording now, but if you still want to hang around, um, feel free to do so. Um, I'll probably shut the room down in about 10 minutes' time, unless there's a huge ruckus of conversation. <laughs> so thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and look forward to you to joining us in the next session in a month's time.